because at some point I've got to establish my CNC down there. Call the meeting to order. This is Wareham Finance Committee. Wednesday, June 30th, 2021. Time is 6.30. We're in room 27 of the town hall. Seems a little uh, slow this evening to start in that we just discovered the doors of the town hall are locked. And uh, it's unfortunate because this is an open meeting. And so we're assuring that they are open. And I will wait and call the roll when uh, the vice president, vice president, vice chairman returns, David Hurd. There is, however, uh, I'll just read a note that came out from Derek regarding meetings that uh, starting June 15th, all boards and committees must meet in person and have in-person quorums. Your pre-COVID scheduled meeting room reservations is still in the meeting room calendar. If there's any change to your pre-COVID meeting day and time, please contact Patty at uh, extension 3110. And uh, the company has a copy of the meeting, open meeting law. Mr. Clerk, may I ask you to call the roll, please? Sure. We have uh, Tom Worthen, Jody Smith, uh, Chair Bernie Pigeon, Stuart Novick, uh, myself, Jerry Stefanski, and I believe the Vice Chair David Hers will be here with us momentarily. Yes, so thank we you. have six, we have a quorum. Thank you. First item on our agenda, in fact, our whole agenda is kind of casual this evening. <clears throat> Just to uh, recap our annual and special town meeting of June 12th. Uh, I just look around and everyone survived it. Hello, Tom. Six hours, nonstop. I think if uh, Clary called a recess, she wouldn't, well, we don't have a quorum, but there wouldn't, half of us would have left. <laughs> she, I mean, she stood up for six hours. She didn't sit down at all. Amazing. I think there's, um, I think it was Dartmouth, she said. They went 10 straight hours. But as an issue with all town meetings, they had to finish their business before the end of the fiscal year because you couldn't start the next fiscal year and spend money, salaries and everything, until the town meeting had passed the budget. These are all little pro calls. You have to split hairs, and if you don't follow the right process, you can't accomplish what you'd want to do. But any comments regarding it? I, uh, I thought the, uh, the process this year was pretty good because um, you read the warrant and then rather than having to read a FinCom explanation and taking the votes of the selectmen and finance committee, Evening, guys. You just went right into the uh, uh, the vote from, from the yeah. public. I think that cleaned up things, made it fast, and I don't see why we can do it that way again. As long as there, as long as the handout's ready and, uh, and everybody's comments and votes are in the handout, I don't see why you got to re read it. The only issue that Claire and I have with the the entire process is oftentimes at our uh, and let the record show that Dominic uh, joined us. Thank you. Uh, Tommy. Uh, uh, Thank you. They have a propensity of not getting the information to us in time so it can appear in our report. By charter, it says we are uh, the source of the information, and at that evening especially, on all the issues. And uh, oftentimes there's a board, and you know it, <coughs> in the past, they've been meeting a half hour before a town meeting for their. Uh, approval or disapproval of a particular article. I never did like that. Nothing gives you enough time to grasp anything. You're in a hurry, you know, before it's me and you know you got to pass it. It doesn't, you feel comfortable with that arrangement? I don't. No. Never did. Well, we're required to provide all that information one week prior to, to make it available. No, and, that and I understand that, I know that, but I'm saying, having that meeting half hour before town meeting and having to make a serious decision is not the way to run things. So, well, that's our point, too. As a member of town meeting, they're sitting there and trying to make a decision, and they made their decision to advise the town meeting in a cer certain fashion. They don't even know it until they walk in the door and if they have time to open up right. whatever piece of paper they're passing out. So it's not fair to the members of the town meeting itself. 
How about the uh, the way the report was laid out? It was not there. It wasn't anything different. But anybody have any suggestions to improve it, make it easier reading, or whatever? I didn't think it was difficult reading. No, the error that they found in the budget itself. Uh, I talked to Derek about it. Was a, a transfer error. As time progresses, when we go through the process of uh, meeting with all the, the department heads, we get their budget. I enter all that into the spreadsheet. And he will meet with them later, and when he finds, uh, it establishes the amount of revenue that we actually have, if you have to make any adjustments, he may make some within a department. And that was the, what was missing, that, the correction. He does a total, I, we show the detail. So at that times I'll, when I figure or find that he has changed something, I'll fudge the number, put the number he's in, let's say for salaries. And how I try to do that mathematically, I may increase oil a little bit or whatever to try to make the math come out. But the bottom line that he has given us, or advised the, uh, as far as the select are concerned, that line is in there. So I just make, try to make the numbers match the, line, the uh, total mathematically. I, I, I think yeah, it's a little small. bad though. If the, if, here we are in June discussing a matter that was over with, um, and the numbers were wrong. Well, right. we, we used the numbers back in President April. Oh, for three seconds. Yeah, early yeah. April. We, we voted. Right. Oh, I understand that. Fine. But the, 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 the poor people coming to the town meeting should have the right damn numbers in front of them. And we've got no excuse for not having I agree. a clean report in front of them. That was the only line out of error I know, but in the entire report. But we looked bad. Oh, indeed, we did. I was very upset over the fact that. Uh, and and I it wasn't so much our fault, but still, the blame's going to end up, you know. It was not hard. that it's a blame game, but like Tommy said, we looked like. I won't say it. <laughs> I felt bad. But the bottom lines were correct. Uh, Claire used his document when he started reading it off without realizing it didn't match how ours was laid out that was in our report. We've, we've used that layout for ever since I've been here. I know, but that's what happens when you're not. You know, should have a long I mean, time. If you have to do a, a dry run beforehand, just don't do it in, in, in front of the public. Have what we're giving the public you're right. right. Indeed. And as far as the economic forecasting is concerned, <coughs> what are your opinions of how the economy is going to run? Are we going to have inflation or what? Because everything, everyone's up in the air where it's going to go. I think. I don't think anybody has any idea what's going to happen. Mm. But I, at Upper Tech yesterday, we had a budget subject. The state appears to be giving more more out of the government because they gave another hundred thousand dollars to transportation. So it's and 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 what I've seen on on the school and there is they're giving more. Now whether or not the towns are gonna get more, you know, I don't know. But it appears that with what happened, their blood money is being blooded to fix the problem. Whether it will or not, I haven't got a clue. You know, will it help inflation? You know, who knows? I, I don't know, but there appears to be more money around than there was. Just an opinion of what I see. What do you think, Tom? No. I, I, I don't know, but that's just because there's more money around than there was, so it doesn't mean you have to spend it. Um, no, it not, may, to, not with careful thought and good reason. But your average person who on, on is going to spend it. My, just an opinion, I believe, and that's what the, I think they want. They want to spend it to help the economy. They don't want the people who have money they gave to who's going to just throw it in a saving hall. However, you're going to do it. They're giving that money out, I believe, jumpstart the economy. So, is the Federal Reserve right? Is this transitory inflation? I, I don't know. That's, 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 that's crap, okay? The real inflation is going to be 5%. It's not going to go down. And we may even get stagflation. All right. The Federal Reserve, okay, is printing money like a 
Right. Absolutely. They can't put it fast enough. The U.S. of A. is what? Thirty trillion in debt. That's the of which nine trillion the Federal Reserve has. <laughs> they can't. Think about that number. It's yeah. How many generations from right now are still going to see that number? That's, that's a million billion. Thank you. A trillion dollars is a million billion. How many zeros is that? Mm. But what I'm saying to him is, how many generations are going to have to deal with that debt? They're never going to fix that debt. That debt is unfixable. It will never okay? get never, It's unfixable. It's just going to get kicked down the road. And when they want to try it out the economy, like he, like he said, print more. Let's have some more. But there's the flip side to that also. And I agree with you, though. I have grandchildren okay, okay. and great-grandchildren. We are the recipient of some of those dollars that they're printing like crazy. And that's the American uh, Rescue Plan that has been passed. And the money's got And the money that uh, we're being allocated for it, let's see, my last sheet here, $2,380,000 based on our population. That's the town of Wareham. Town of Wareham will receive that through two two parts. This is um, the infrastructure stuff. Pardon? This is for the EPM? No. no, no. This, this is, is not before that. This is for the, this is still on the COVID. Oh, okay. So there's a limitation as what we can spend it on. However, um, oh, we'll find a way to spend it. I think we'll find a way to spend it. They've loosened some of the restrictions on it, so it's a little bit easier to spend. Well, th this is the st yeah. what Bernie just read is the second round. Mm. Yeah. We've already got a couple. Well, we get a, a million eight last time? Yes. Something like that. So almost two million, they're going to give us another two. That accounts for all the plastic in the, uh, on the desk and all. They support the uh, public health response, public sector revenue losses, water and sewer infrastructure, equity-based focus services, uh, neg uh, delays the negative impact, economic impacts, premium pay for essential workers, some uh, workers working in the healthcare system, it's in the police also. We're promised a premium and broadband infrastructure. The in ineligible uh, uses are only two, three, probably, uh, to reduce your net tax, so that doesn't account for it. And extra any extraordinary payments into a pension fund, and there are other restrictions apply, but you have to go on to the website to buy, see the list. But you put in there any economic, would you say, downfall or, or, or Yes, any, any negative consequences that suffered as a result that's, of the COVID. That's it's anything. COVID. It's so the really you can spend it on anything. You can, you can find... Well, they have a list that uh, gives you a impression of the limitation that you have. But then again, it's a matter of interpretation sometimes that's also. Right. Yeah, because that's uh, a broad term. But you know, what you don't want to do is interpret it as flexible or as wide as possible to satisfy what you need and then have to give the money back. Because the government does that too. I don't want to do that. Or you don't want well, to set, it up, set up your run rate at something that you can't, down. you're not going to get hey, filled hey, in. Oh, well, he can't sustain, he can't spend it on business. positions. If he can't sure, sustain it five years, they never get it back. But, uh, they don't actually take it back. The next time they give you money, they just don't give you as much as you said. They dock it. We've, they've done that to us. Not to us. Yeah. Other communities have uh, had that. Yeah, right. so, yeah, when they get their cherry sheet, it suddenly has a shortfall in it because they did something else down the road. Yeah. Oh, well. So we're all pessimistic, and I think that's rightly so. As if, no, uh, no. if you refer back to yeah. the revenues, projected revenues, on the marijuana, we're only uh, projecting 150000 we were up with almost close to uh, four to five hundred thousand at one point. We only have one uh, retailer. The uh, Cannabis Commission is the one that's holding up any of the others' emission, not ourselves, because it's a lot of bucks they ask too. And because of the other cities and towns that they've seen how much money is available in that revenue stream, they now have uh, approved retails in their own communities, so they're no longer picking it up on the way to the Cape at our place. A lot more stores. And they can get it down the Cape now also. Uh, so that has reduced it significantly. 
So it's you're saying it's down? Revenue yes. Is down. And it's also projected, um, I I'm not sure if there's been legislation proposed, but the retailers, currently we get 3%. Then all the money goes back up to the state, we get another 3% back. So it's a total of 6%. They're fighting that uh, extra 3%. And if they win in the legislature, that reduces our revenues by that 3%. So that's why, again, we're cutting half what we typically had on, on the 3% sales. I'm not sure how uh, the delivery systems are going to work, because I was uh, reading the articles and the other towns are doing the same thing, approving it for those retail locations. I turn it down so you get yep. least to hear it. So there's going to be competition all across the board. And it isn't too good for the brains. <laughs> I don't know, Tom, you sound pretty good. Well, I was going to say, he seems to survive pretty <laughs> <Yeah>. well. <laughs> but you never inhaled, right, Tom? Uh, <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> Clinton, you never inhaled, right? <laughs> <laughs> never inhaled, that's right. No, it's it, um, it, it comes with its own package of problems. social problems. Absolutely. 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 Those problems are in existence no matter what. We might as well get some money out of it. Okay. Um, just prior to town meeting, uh, we squeaked in uh, the request for an initial backhoe for the uh, town maintenance. Uh, the existing backhoe, because we didn't Excuse know how me. much. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm Christian Fernandes. I'm sure you guys all know who I am. Yes. You're um, your meeting is very low coming out broadcasting. Um, we think it has something to do with the AC units. We, of course, we don't want you guys to be super hot in here, but maybe talk louder so people at home can hear you. Well, that's the only one running. Well, he has it at max, and we can't hear him at home. I can't reach Steve. So for the time being, maybe just talk a little louder. Talk louder? Yeah. Well, what would happen if we shut that one off and yeah. turn that one on? They wouldn't hear me. It, the microphone's there. Um, yeah. Turn that one off. I'm sorry. So, uh, I would say just talk louder, talk like at this volume, and uh, maybe people can hear you better. Um, and we'll investigate the problem so it doesn't happen next time. Um, but we're doing the best we can. I just want to let you know it's low. Thanks. Yeah, there's some of the problems last night with the selectmen. Yeah. But they were here investigating that. They thought they fixed it. Obviously not. But <laughs> we're, we're working on it. Okay. Great. All right. So just talk a little louder. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Actually, okay. Regarding the backhoe, um, I asked David to give me the uh, cost and the repair of the backhoe that had um, blown a valve in the transmission or somewhere. It's uh, ten thousand, and that was including uh, replacing some uh, cables. Or not cables, but some uh, hydraulic lines that were being chafed for however they were located. And he also got the new machine which was fortuitous because a week after they got the old machine back, it failed again. And, but they repaired it in-house. So we now have two backhoes, so there shouldn't be a problem digging graves. I, I have a comment on that. Yes. I just went on to uh, uh, Google and looked up cemetery digging equipment. For $18,000, you can get a fantastic German machine digs the hole, lifts the casket, everything else. And one of the big real reasons to get a new backhoe or additional backhoe or run to run with two backhoes because we had that dig grave. I mean, there's, I don't think we thoroughly looked at all of the issues behind the decision to spend, what, $400,000 on the backhoe? Yeah, I think we had 120. No, it was about 200000 yeah. But we use it for things. Yeah, I know. 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 Having two was to dig graves. There are other ways to dig graves that are for equipment that's just targeted for that. 
process. And I just, my concern was that we don't dig deep enough on the decisions that are significant um, within all of the departments. The, um, I think capital and, and planning. Not that, not that the German <laughs> grave digger is the best thing. I mean, a mausoleum is the best thing that we need. Because I think uh, capital planning, if I recall, had the replacement of that backhoe two years out. It was listed as yeah. being at the end of its life. As a, as a replacement. As a now replacement. We have, now yes. we have two. Right. But it was going to be replaced within two years anyway. So you, we buy another piece of equipment, a German grave digging machine that is only used for digging graves, when a year from now we've got to go buy a new backhoe anyway. I'm, I'm so, concerned with having two. Yeah. I'm not concerned about having two. Uh, because the, the backhoe is used virtually all the time. It's a very it was a, they, the, critical the, item. With the pedo tube said that we were using it 10 hours a week. Right? I mean, the, the, the run rate. <laughs> the run rate was slow, yeah. yes. So, I, mean, <laughs> well, I think a lot of that had to do with uh, charge of manpower also. There's a lot of projects out there that are complaining that they don't have uh, that aren't getting done. You can go on, go on where it matters and all. And they're complaining that uh, drains have caved in and they're not being replaced. I have one up uh, near Main Street that I go by every day sitting there with a cone. It's been there for months and it's down about a foot. And they need this equipment to repair it, but they also need personnel to be able to send out to do it. And he's only got uh, 10 men there. So the issue, is, the issue is headcount, or is it? Uh, well, I think it's, it's it's holding up a lot of work because of the lack of headcount. Because they used to have thirty uh, a long time ago. I don't, I don't know how many years ago. In, in those ten guys, a couple of them were truck drivers. Uh, there's only six laborers in that whole department. Not that the drivers and heavy equipment operators don't help, yeah. but that that's not a big staff they have there. You know, and as far as the, the back, I mean. I watch the guy go by all the time with the thing to clean the beaches. I mean, that's just going down the onset, but he's got to do swifts and, you know, wherever else he goes. And I couldn't figure out. I watched gang mowers go by on a different machine for about two weeks in a row. I couldn't figure out where all the grass was <laughs> that they were using all these gang mowers. I mean, but, uh, And yeah. he's got a staff, uh, Yeah, that's two guys right there. Well, those two are, are separate. They're part-timers, but we don't have one. We have one. They hired one up there and they were normally uh, one of the two of the ten were up there and even when you've got part-timers up there for that section you've got uh, they have to be relieved for, for dinner, lunches so you have to send a regular guy up there to stay for one lunch two lunch then he goes lunch himself so he's out for two and a half hours at, uh, at the minimum for a full day every day and they don't they can't keep people up there at this point in time, uh, they're paying thirteen fifty an hour, and they're standing outside all day long. Unless the huts are too far or a little distance away, they can go. I'm not sure if they're air conditioned, considering what it's like during the day. But they just stand there all day, and that's what they do. I mean, they're, they're part-time people, but it's hard to find guys who want to stay. What do you know, stand there all day? Yeah. Okay, for fifteen fifty, I can go over to Lowe's and cash out in a nice air-conditioned building. No heavy lifting. So it's difficult, and we're paying thirteen fifty because that's what our budget allows. We can't do anything but the, uh, the benefits may be much better than on average, but when you're 21, 22, you don't care about what your retirement's gonna look like. You just want a paycheck at the end of the week, and you're able to go someplace else, get $2 or more, Sit in air conditioned. That's and if tough, you, if tough you have part time, you're not getting, you're not really interested in benefits at that right. point. Yeah, yeah. So it's so. difficult. If you uh, look outside on the bulletin board, I believe there's around 15 openings. Since the first of the year, we hired. I'm not saying they're still there. We've hired 25 people. Now that would mean there'd be 40. Since the first of the year. Since the first of the year. And you know so that now so because when, when do you use the first of the year? 
January 1. I went back to January 1. But, but the first of the year is July 1. Or, or yes, but they're, they're hired. That's the fiscal year. That's the fiscal yeah. year. Well, I mean, what, what, what year are we working on? Let's, the first of the year, January 1. The budget is based on no, Tom, July, to, July to, no, to June. Right? Let, me, let me finish, please. <coughs> the selectmen now approve all hires. So I looked at their, their uh, agendas. Started with July 1. All their agendas, I counted the number of people they, uh, they voted to hire. Since January 1, they've hired 25 people. And there's 15 still posted on the bulletin board. That's a total of 40 people. That would empty this, time, this building out totally. It's not that they uh, had that many vacancies. If that, it's the people they've hired and didn't show up. I talked to Doreen, and she sends them out for their physical at our expense, their drug test at our expense. She said, one guy showed up. Uh, I worked for a week. He didn't show up on Monday. Called him. He said, oh, I found a better job. And some just don't show up at all. It's, it's extraordinary how <coughs> the workforce is doing now, especially the younger group. They're not coming to work. They don't want to work. But again, as I said, uh, because of uh, our limited revenues, we can't pay more than thirteen fifty. There are some positions that will obviously start more, depending upon their skill level. But uh, you can talk to water pollution, even the EMS. Uh, they are referring to themselves as a resume enhancer. They'll come in, uh, hire someone, they'll still work for a year, get their licenses, get certifications, uh, and the like, and then go to another community that is paying better. Because they can even start better once they receive their certifications and all. So it's tough competition out there. It is, really is. And it's <coughs> that goes for the co-ops, too. Yeah, they, they hire three and two leave. I mean, you know, they get pirated by other towns. Mm -hmm. You know, it, happen, it happens everywhere. I mean, it's yeah. not just a Wareham problem, mm -hmm. but it's I had, I had something that would help them, and they somebody told me that it was illegal. So if the sewer commission hires this person and they get them certified and all that, and then, like Dave said, they leave, make them pay that money back to the cost to certify them. You know, is, is that something that can be put into a contract? Or you have to stay a minimum of three years after your certification? You know, there are ways around that stuff. There is. It was legal. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's based on negotiation. But there's a reason to keep them. I mean, there's a well, negotiation you, to keep them. Well, it could be competitive, too, if I have a community uh, two towns over that isn't requiring them that they reimburse for their certification. So it's, it's competition as well as negotiation. No, I that. Yeah, it's not that we're we're poor or we can't afford. Well, we can't cannot afford because we don't have the revenues to support it. Eighty-three percent of us are all uh, single-family households, so it's difficult to get the kind of the amount of revenues we really need to provide all the services they're receiving in other communities. So it's difficult for us to try to do something. Okay, now, uh, to alleviate that somewhat, we have the liaisons, uh, assignments for everybody, and Dave and I have talked about it, how to do it, and we could put down through the list, there's some 33 commissions, boards and commissions, over and above all the departments and everything we have. And every once in a while, the name will pop up. Uh, news, the news will have their names in it, and I like that, well, let's say the Cultural and Recreation Commission has met. And what? Who? <laughs> and but, where? <laughs> where? But that's how they, uh, they do it. And they said every once in a while they do have an effect. And Stuart, you were on, what commission were you on before you came here? Uh, no. Were you on one? I thought you were. I thought your name stayed, uh, no. uh, popped up or something. But. The difficulty is trying to choose who would go where, and so we're going to do it um, in a random method. <laughs> I have every commission and group in here. So if you would each choose three, 
and I will put your name on the list. And can't pick a certain one. Can we trade? You can pick yeah, anyone. Yeah. Yeah. This will be a Yankees walk. All right. Okay, you have three. It does. It's, it's a matter of um, some of the stuff these don't even meet, but uh, every other month or every three months, something like that. But it's more a case of if something happens over there, um, just put, um, you can go into the town and have their agendas automatically sent to your uh, email. And just look at the agenda, see what's up. If there's something you think is pertinent or important. Have we uh, given any thought to getting rid of some of these commissions? <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, what does the Beach and Tourism Commission do? I mean, we could go around again and everybody could take another three. We had, we had commission. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. And didn't, don't we already okay. have a dog park? Now, Mike, you want to trade any? Yeah. What do you want? Looking for Upper Tech if anybody has it. Upper Tech? Oh, no, excuse me, sorry. Um, my apologies. Upper Tech, you do have it anyway. Okay. Because you're an elected member of that. That's right. Uh, David, I don't care what I get to. Uh, David has the uh, capital planning because he's appointed okay, to that. Okay, that's all I wanted to make sure he I have. He also has the uh, police building committee because he's, uh, he's our representative on that. And the Degas uh, building isn't that because it's uh, going to be a moot point in a matter of months. Yeah. Well, if anybody wants any of these, they can have like a zoning study committee, shot <laughs> review group, the council on aging. Uh, I'll trade you the console. Legal, all yours. What are you what are you for? For? <laughs> I'll give you cultural and recreation or the library board of trustees. Uh, I'll do libraries. I'll take whatever else you got. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> the library committee will be in banged heads once. <laughs> no, you bang heads twice. Libraries are cultural. That's it. They do a pretty good job, I'll tell you. You had the. Yeah, uh, back when they did. The zoning study group that you say? Did you like that? No, but I just want to tell you about that. That is um, several years ago, he had an article in Warren uh, created the zoning study committee, but it sunsetted. If you go into the um, list on uh, town website, you get the idea or the impression that they still exist. Well, they don't because they say they, they sunset it. However, the selectmen has a, uh, created a committee via uh, Derek, and he's going to um, have a group, an ad hoc group, as they term, termed it, to do a study of the zoning. Okay. I'll keep it on okay. Yeah. So which three do you have now? I have um, Charter Review Group. Zoning, zoning Study. Study. That's 10 years down the road, for crying out loud. You can throw that one yeah. away. No, they've changed that now. Cultural uh, and recreation. Which is different. With, with the uh, change of the charter that we did at the last town meeting, the charter study group can be uh, reformed any time within the 10-year period, but the charter requires it definitely be performed every 10 years. The, and they are going to be reformed. Again. So you got to pass on that. Did I go lucky? Yeah. Which one did you have, Tom? Okay. Charter Review Group. Okay. Zoning Study. Okay. And cultural and Recreation. That was the one. Courtesy of my friend. <laughs> okay. Dominic, what, uh, excuse me, uh, Stuart, what do you have? I have the Beach and Tourism Commission, or Committee, I don't know, what is it? Committee? Beach and Tourism. <laughs> uh, Dog Park Study Committee, and the Planning Board. 
The, uh, the dog part, I know the one up. Um, I thought we did these. What was the third one? You got the planning board. That's coming up again. They're raising money again. They're primarily they did they got some seed money from CPZ, and they're I think they got another um, contribution from a group or a person off the Cape who does a lot of funding like that. How about you, Jerry? What do you got? I got the uh, ZBA, the school, and open space. Now I'm looking to trade the open space here. <laughs> with a bonus of 25 cents for somebody that <laughs> gives me something. Anybody want this? Open space. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what do you got to give me? Trent. I got um, general government. Oh, Jesus. That's, That's a dollar. That's a dollar. That's higher than lieutenant general government. <laughs> Keep it coming. What else? Um, I got CBC. What's the uh, that's, that's a conflict for you. Human services. What? Human services. Oh, Jesus. What was the first one you had? General <laughs> government. I have no idea what that is, but they meet every day from no, uh, 8 to that's 6. The, uh, the group here in the town, uh, the assessor's office, uh, treasurer's office, as a business Group. You went to the center in the budget, you used the, budget, you the first part of our no, budget, ends up with all those, uh, <laughs> the house. The government. What's a pass? Well, you went to the library? That would be like if uh, Jackie has something coming up on the assessor's office, a pilot program, stuff like that. So it does get involved into the uh, um, information services part of the game? Yes. Which is a disaster. Yes, Matt is uh, the things that Matt accomplishes. Huh? The things that Matt accomplishes. Are you hear me? The testing, testing. Huh? Yeah. No, it's it, it's. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Um, I would. Um, no, I mean not not. No, I mean you have to as well as I have of getting rid of uh, uh, Vadar and moving it over into a uh, common system. I agree with you. I think that's perhaps what we should try and take on this year. See if we can accomplish that. You know, and somehow support it, that is to say, yeah. we can't uh, motivate it with support it. Well, and then you know, the fire department has, the water department has a, has one. I mean, we, we've got information services deluxe, but not well, yeah, there's a different system we should that, have. There's a different system that runs the schools. Yeah. And, uh, this should be all the same system. The current system we use, the VAR, um, no longer provides contracts for updates. It's no longer provides a service contract for repair. It's all on a billable basis now. That's so encouraging. So you're. So, okay. Okay. I haven't heard anything. Jerry, well, you but, didn't want any of my no, good stuff. I, anybody want open space for where I trade for conservation? What's the I, difference? <laughs> but you want to trade it for conservation? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, but you don't have conservation, do you? No, I don't. It's got nobody, it's still in the box. Nobody picked it, so you're going to have to wait and trade next time. I'll keep what, what I have. What do you got, Dave? Well, I'm on Bring capital on planning. <laughs> I'm also on the police building committee. Yep. Uh, and I can't count very well, because I took four of them. <laughs> three. All right, Dave. No, no, Dave, no, 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 uh, joint Town Services. That's a pass. Recycling Committee and Veterans Council. Well, I don't see any uh, takers on it, so Jody, you're, Jody, you're next. <laughs> so I got the Library Board of Trustees, Council on Aging, and Public Safety. Jesus, no takers on you either. <laughs> ah, I don't have a problem with any of them. I mean, it's they're good. Mm -hmm. 
to these I mean, groups. What, what got me involved in this was the Council on Aging, if you remember. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which came, came in front of trying to get a director. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, years I ago. do, I remember that. Yep. <laughs> what do you got, Tom? I did, uh, oh, yeah, do you already swap? Yeah. Okay. Everyone's good? We got a bunch left. We'll do that another time if you like. Anybody who uh, want to take a look what's in? Sure. You don't get to oh, come on, Jerry. They, you yeah, just add. You just add. Okay. We got conservation. <laughs> hey, Stuart wants an extra. You don't, got any, I don't uh, need any extras. Okay. You don't want any extras? No, maybe, Dominic? maybe a cat park study. Because yeah. you got four already. That's four too many. Ah. Because you go to the meetings and you, like, else? you know, you don't get involved, yeah. you don't say nothing. All you do is go to report back to us. And well, as I mentioned, you just have um, the agendas automatically uh, sent to you. Yeah. If you see anything interesting on it, all right, uh, financially interesting. Uh, yes, yeah, that would be interesting for us. Okay, I agree. Some of these commissions and committees don't do anything that affects us. But then again, sometimes one sneaks by. Conservation right. did one recently. Uh, they've been working on with the one of the solar, I believe, <laughs> groups, and so they're they're having an impact. Five solar. I just not to get off the subject, but I do have something I would like to say about the solar. You can. Say, we are on every subject tonight. Okay. So they didn't pass that law at town meeting. Do you really think? They Yes, they did. They did pass. Yeah, we passed. Well, it was passed. Yes, it, it, it was so, study. It's, they have a study committee to come up with some recommendations as to what new bylaws they have. They, as a they adapted what uh, Nancy had proposed, and they're using it as a moratorium. But it's everything she had there is in, is intact. Because what I was going to say is, if they really think the town is going to buck heads with AD Makepeace. He's already got his permits in, what they need, because there was nine. He be once more. They, they, they just yeah. can't win. So why make a law that you can't? I, I think they're just issue. running for the state, right? I, I would like somebody to explain to us what the economics are of the solar field, so we understand the drive behind it. I mean, wh um, we, we have, have the very, very, very weak solar bylaw. You know, from the operator's point of view? Yeah, from the... They must think, make money. Huh? They must make money. There's a lot yeah, of but money. Yeah, and there's also... But they get incentives to do things as well, right? But I think that's what the state is struggling with. It's a huge... Go ahead, I'm sorry. I think that's what the state is struggling with. They've created a, sort of a monster by incenting these solar fields and, that are now, now causing the curve cutting yeah. across the Commonwealth. And so the state is looking at this to try to revise it so that we'll still get solar power, but if somebody's in the ground like hell to get involved before that thing right. changes. Right. Right. And what their biggest problem is... But I, I would just like to know how rich that is, how, how nice a deal that is. Well... Because there's so many different people trying to come in and do nickel-dime little projects that look like it. And, so, the, and the only thing I want to do is when solar dies, they take all the goddamn equipment out. Yeah. Good luck. That'll never happen. But the, the, th the thing, Tom, that what I read about it was is it's not that it makes so much money per year. Is the longevity of it. It's an annuity. It's, 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 it's almost forever. Even, even, even though the panel, some panels go down, they replace parts, they, they do that type of thing. But they're looking at it as saving the you know, fossil fuel. Saving the world, you know, that kind of, that yeah, stuff, yeah. That's, that kind of crap. You know, if you believe in that, I mean, a lot of people we'll do, well, we'll be, I'll be dead, everybody will be dead long before any of that stuff changes. So, you know, you got to look for the future people. You pick your oh, pump the oil. <laughs> I have no problem. <laughs> that, and Stuart alluded to, the great problem is that people are, the people who are putting these uh, solar panels in, it's costing them money. Now, we just approved on how many, three or four projects, pilots? Three. Three. They produce us over 600,000 a year. If you're running a solar field and you can convince the legislature that the cities and towns cannot choose to charge you like that, it's an advantage, and that's what they're trying to do. That pilot money 
is coming to us. They're under contract for it for grandfathering. They don't want it because that's a lot of money well, it's only out for of their 20 pocket. Years. Pardon? It's only for 20 years. Yes. I think the permit even for the um, solar field itself is 20 years. I'm not sure about that as far as, you know, the licensing to put the field itself in. Because um, there's a fellow uh, who built the, the building that uh, Louise is in, and he's up at Maine doing solar fields now. And it's, it's money. There's a lot of money in that because, it's, so as uh, Stuart has said, the incentives are there. You're guaranteed to sell everything you produce. The electric companies have to take it. There's no choice. I and I believe the rate is probably set is what they have to buy it. It's not a competitive industry. You know, if you look at those solar farms, what they pay in taxes is basically more than what Walmart pays. If you think about it, what's Walmart? 135000 a year or something? It's not this big, huge number that people think. It's one of these solar farms is paying that really just sitting there. I'm not saying they're a good idea. I'm not saying I'm in favor. I'm just stating the facts. Facts, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, if you look at it that way, I mean, it's... Like, do I want to see a town full of solar farms? No. But they are... They are revenue. That's the unfortunate part in a town that really needs revenue. Okay. But you got to weigh the... Moving on, um, we have some... Uh, Membership candidates. Uh, we had a meeting last week. There was uh, <clears throat> Judy as chairman of the selectmen, moder uh, Claire as moderator, and I as the chairman of this, this committee. And we interviewed a candidate. In fact, the gentleman, Matt, Matt is a candidate. Uh, He's the guy asleep back there? Yep. <laughs> Fits him fitting right in. Uh, we reappointed Dominic. And Glenn, and now I'm, they're both on their final three-year uh, terms. And then we had uh, three candidates. Matt is one. Uh, Jody, I believe it's her name, if I recall. Yeah, that's me. Oh, my apologies. I apologize. Sorry, you, you weren't there. How are you doing? Much better. Good. I was very sick. Good. Glad you're doing. Whatever better. I had, I don't wish it upon anybody. It was the <laughs> Yeah, she was unable to attend because of a uh, strep throat, and we were grateful. <laughs> she, yes. She made that choice. And then it came into a stomach, a viral stomach bug, which was Ooh. awful. Ugh. But you, you are now. You are on the mend? I am. I'm still, I'm, you know, I'm still feeling a little bit weak, but. Glad you're sitting next to her. I've been going to work all week, so. All right. Yeah. You were able to uh, interview Jody. Uh, because of that, and so uh, we did not vote on any of the candidates to fill the open position, giving uh, Jody as well as uh, Alice Bailey, who was another candidate, uh, was, uh, so uh, was attending. So that uh, we're going. Claire will schedule something next week or two weeks or next month anyway, and we'll interview them then and fill the, the vacancy we have. What, what changed with Ellis? Didn't he have to get off of this? When he, took when he became job? an employee. Yes. Yeah, so he was working for the so working water for pollution. Anymore. Pardon? He doesn't work for us anymore? No, he doesn't work for the town anymore. It didn't last that long. No. So he's reapplied. Uh, another issue we have, they've, uh, they have a harassment policy that requires signature. And I would ask if you might fill it out if you have no objections. Go on the website. Uh, you can he, read the discriminatory harassment policy of the town of Wareham. And the ones who I don't have is David, um, blah, blah, blah. Dominic. Good. No, that's not a computer. Okay. I'll take a look at it. This started. I don't think they're giving you a choice. <laughs> <laughs> This started just as we went into Zoom. And so, of course, very difficult to pass these things out as such. And Tom, you can sweet, turn it into me if you would. When you say just started, the town just doing the harassment policy and signing it all? No, it was just a matter of uh, asking for it. It actually came out. 
Yeah, we sent this, we mailed it in this week. We yeah. were asked to. Yeah, you asked. I never received the. Uh, oh, really? No. I was just going to say, I didn't do one of those 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing yep. has changed. Nothing has changed. Yeah. Okay, as far as uh, we are um, 13 meetings behind in our minutes, hopefully uh, Derek and I have discussed that he is hiring a part-time person to work within the building to float around the various departments if they're shorthanded, which they are. And using the DVDs provided by uh, Bob, uh, that person can review our meetings and give us at least a skeletal description of what took place. That'll make it, uh, and we can sign off on it, accept it, and that'll make the, the record complete. So we need an odd copy, as Richard Sandra, and we yes. just can't vote it in that, that they will write? No, okay. no. Right. Uh, we do have, as I said, a complete DVD copy of our meeting, but it's the state okay. legislature has not uh, change the requirements at all. They still met the law requires paper copies. Okay. They haven't been able to decide how they're going to handle digital. That's why you need to vote Ellis back. <laughs> He's a good secretary. <laughs> also, let's see. Do you hear what else was in? Yeah. Used to bring his laptop and zip it right out. I know. Yeah. We have them done before we left. Yeah. Okay, the next uh, item on our agenda, because uh, we do this every year at this point in time, is a reorganization. Uh, I'm going to have to turn this over to the vice chair to uh, go through the initial uh, reorganization and appointing of the chairman, vice chairman, and clerk. I move to appoint Bernie chairman. Okay. We have a motion. Second. I'll second. A second. We don't have to second. But second for information. For information. <laughs> All right. Would anyone else care to be chair? Good question. Anybody else? Uh, Bernie, I thought you said. You're not that. answering the question. The question <laughs> is: Is anyone else interested? I mean, I don't want to, you know, if Bernie's the only one that wants it, so yeah. be it. So speak up if anyone is. All right. There's no one. No information. The wing. You realized you had 31 meetings we had up no minutes for or whatever. You said you want, and you the, the amount of effort you put into getting ready for the town meetings that got rolled through this spring, you said you didn't want to do it anymore. Is that, did I get that right? You're correct. Well, well do you have a choice? But, uh, yes, I'll take it. Uh, okay, all right. There's uh, uh, been a few other outside individuals who have encouraged me to continue doing so. And the reason I was uh, con contemplating it is if there was someone else who was willing to do it while I'm still here. I have two more years left on my last group, three years. And I would uh, wonder, love to, to teach someone how would we, how I do it anyway, make up their, obviously, put their own impact or imprint on it. But at least there'd be someone around that they could fall back on to ask, you know, how was this, what did this happen in the background, et cetera. But uh, we've discussed amongst ourselves with the individuals, and uh, it is, a, it can be quite a burden. I, I've done it for so many years, I know what to do, so it makes it easy for me. But if someone else was interested in doing it, I didn't want to step into it. But under okay. the circumstances, I uh, yes. You. I thought you said you were getting old and gray and concerned. <laughs> Was. Are you empathizing with the town? The uh, one advantage of uh, being old and gray is that we're full-time volunteers, and that's uh, oftentimes it can be. It, it depends on who sits in the chair, how much time you put into it. I enjoy doing it. I've been doing it for 18 years. God uh, bless you, and you got it. We enjoyed having you, so let's try right. this. Thank you. Bernie, any other questions for Bernie? All right. And yeah. nobody else has stepped up and volunteered to take the job. Well, so well, can, can I, I read the I I person in my contract? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're going to cut it in half. 
no, 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 no. I'm going to pay more than the next person. We'll double. <laughs> All right. All those in favor of Bernie as chair? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Everybody, I'll give you a raise. It's unanimous. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have trouble with the ethics committee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, as chair now, the next position we have is that of vice chair. And I have a nomination. Second. Wait a minute, I was talking with that, I didn't hear it. Yes. Who do you say, Jody? David. David. Seconded by Stewart. Discussion. Negotiation. Is there anyone else who would be interested in the position? Anyone else interested in the position? Top. Jody? Jody? Darn. Not me, boss. <laughs> All right, I have one year left. So. <laughs> that six, so you got to stop after one more year, Dave? Yes. Oh, yeah, nine well, years. You can roll it. You can't. Oh, you go nine. We go down. Yeah, nine. Yes, this will be nine. So I can't so roll it over. another so three now, Rashford? Right? Is there someone else Boy. who would like no, to take it two. over? Now's your opportunity. Jody, you sure? Yeah. I think he'd like to. Well, no, it's not a matter of liking. I mean, I'm, I'm really pretty new to wear him, so anything that comes up, I have to drive out there and see where it is. I got to Google the streets. I got to go look. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, if I knew all the players, for lack of a better word, in town, you know, I'm learning, I'm meeting a lot, lot of lot. great people and stuff, you know, so. so take, take it over after You know, maybe a year from now, I might give it some thought, but I mean, I'm, okay. I'm you know, I'm still learning where him. You know, it, and you know, and I love being down here. You know, so it's not that I'm gun shy. I'm not, never afraid to talk to people and ask questions. Uh, but right now, I think, you know, I mean, if you got any suggestions, you know, but uh, but yeah, I, I still have to go out and look at places because I have no idea what they're talking about. Oh, we all. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just right. Well, I get a hands-on effect too. Okay, there be no other nominations. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. <laughs> All right. We have the uh, position of clerk. Jerry. And then I'll second. second. Discussion? <laughs> None. Anybody want the job? Jerry. Jerry. No, I meant anyone else. Any, yeah, anything great? No, no take it. Pay me off or fight me for it? Or? Well, no, no take this, Jerry. Pay me, please. And get <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell, I tell you what, though. What? If Alice gets voted in, I guarantee, can can you, can things be changed, to Bernie? The committee can do anything it wants to do. He, he loved it. He had brings in his computer, so he's up for a vote. If he gets in, he'll take it over for you. If you don't want it. He's doing a great job. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not saying you're not doing a great job. I've yeah. said it twice now. No, no, I mean, I'm doing it, I say. <laughs> Make your point. <laughs> if you want to keep it, if you don't, I'm telling you, there's an out for you. Okay, obviously, uh, no one else is being on the door. I'll, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> what a guy. Good. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The vote. Very good. Um, I'm not sure how happy we should be because this didn't see, you know, no one was beating our doors down. Take it from us. Hey, Jerry. How you doing? Bernie, is, is that the clue? <laughs> um, the next meeting is uh, August 18th. Well, before you go on, Tech, can we go back to five? Any other business un unanticipated? Certainly. Oh. So, I think Bernie kind of knows what's coming. <laughs> uh, haven't come from another town that's in the FinCom. I know what I learned to like at the time and what I was looking for for, for information. Back before COVID hit, I had put this together. This is just as a fiscal 22 workbook. I got all the salaries. We get we get a budget that says wages. I want the wages broken down. You know, within the town hall, I understand that, you know, it's not that difficult of a thing. But I'm going to give I'm going to give you an example. You know, I know you know. I'll give you a better example. They asked, "What does the town plan to make?" There's nobody in the room. I could look right here and I could tell you exactly what he makes. I could tell you he let a clerk, he placed a clerk, put it towards the 
assistant town planner. I mean, I had that in front of me. They asked what the town clerk makes. I had that right in front of me. You know, uh, I think the people in the town have a right to know. You know, you talked about the uh, police. You know, I look at this. Patrol officers, we got 31 of them for a total of $2,358,315. I mean, I've, I've got the wages broken down, and the police department did a great job in an Excel spreadsheet, so I could just cut it off where patrolmen ended and hit add, and it came yeah, up with the number. But, the sand is really good. But, uh, yeah, yeah, but, uh, but you know, we talked about missile maintenance and, and the shot-handedness. You know, I mean, they have heavy equipment operator, you know, truck driver, laborer, you know, four of them for $148,000. So I can look at this, and I've had people question things. I said, nobody in this town is really overpaid. Are they making a fair wage? You could debate that to the cows come home. But they do a phenomenal job. Some of them, you know, as it's been said, you know, they, they're their own worst enemy because they do such a good job for the money they're making. You know, uh, so I did this, and I was kind of helter-skelter when I started doing this before COVID hit. I was about three quarters away. I was going into every department and asking them, I want a breakdown because every department does it in a different way. Then last year, I got, well, no, I'm getting ahead. This year, when COVID, I said to Bernie, I said, I got most of the departments. I could figure out what was going on, but I get some departments. I want a breakdown. You know, I mean, so, you know, you can look at this. You know, this is just called a worksheet. I mean, not everybody got it, so it's really not a public document. Document. This is just kind of my putting things together. I don't have a problem. You know, it's funny. I heard the clerk for the selectman question at the meeting. Was it this past meeting or the meeting before? They got one and a half clerks for a total of $58,568. That's not a ton of money. No. You know, so, but it's one and a half. And when I come up with one and a half, I just take the amount of hours they all work and divide it. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's what it comes out to. You know, so, I would like, you know, what I would like to see and is that every department come forward and bring a breakdown. I'm not looking what... I can't, even name, I can't even name any clerks, but I don't care what the individuals make. I'm looking at well, that. You're not looking for names. You're looking for office, if they got three clerks for a total of 150000 I'm just doing simple math. That's all I'm looking for. You know, and I, and I, you know, I get it broken down. You know, inspectional services. There's an assistant building inspector. One full-time position. You know, I, I know that electrical inspector, which all towns have to have in plumbing and all that, and what they make. You know, EMS, the director. They got four lieutenants. How many people knew that? But for a total of 248000 You know, so I kind of, I think the people in the town are entitled to that information. Yeah. I think for us to make a, a educated recommendation, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything. Don't think, I don't think there's anything. No, you're just looking for information. I mean, until I started doing this, I didn't even know we had a, a benefits coordinator in the town hall that does the benefits for all the employees. You know, I see wages for human resource. I'm saying, oh, where's the, who's the other person? I had no idea there was somebody in the town hall that did that job. You know, I, I should have assumed that, coming having worked in another town, but I didn't. You know, shame on me. Uh, question, Jody. Yep. You, you mentioned with EMS, he has four lieutenants. You're interested in the total of what the four lieutenants That's are making. That's all. Not what each individual is making. Don't care what each one makes. You just want that level. Yeah. Because in every department, there's different levels, like a clerk could be... 10 years in, and another clerk would be only five years in. Right. I, I'm clerks. Clerks. How much is the clerk? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking to see so what everybody's I'm making individually. There's three clerks, and they all make different. You want, like, clerk one, two, and no, three? No, just no, total. Just total clerks. For the office. Okay. You know, it, 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 looking at human resources, you know, benefits coordinator, that's why you got done this. And they added a, a clerk this year. So that comes out on here. So that's, I got nothing to compare that to. Right. But I compared... And I hate to show some of this, but like what the town administrator made in fiscal year 21 to fiscal year 22, I have all that in percentages, you know, with Excel. I mean, everything, you just poke some numbers in bango, you got them. So I would like to see a uniformed way with these towns. Like I said, the police department did a wonderful job. You know, mm -hmm. some do, some just bring in wages and expenses. Well, the expenses in the town hall, you know, they, they, they basically pencils and paper. You know, there's not a whole lot of expenses in the town hall. You know, so I sat here, and, and I hate to burden towns with a whole lot more. 
I, mean, I hate doing stuff landscape. I like, but uh, so I put a fiscal 23 worksheet together. And, and all I'm asking for, and, and I'm not picking on the town administrator, but he's at the top of the budget, full-time employees, one. For fiscal 23, it will be one. And what's the budgeted request? How much is he looking for? Because remember, a lot of these department heads pick up extra money for travel maybe, or mm -hmm. they might need it for a license or a class or whatever, you know. Uh, expenses. Expenses, whatever they could be. And I can tell you, I, I went to the town report the last one I got for 2020, and I looked at all the department heads. It went back five years to see how much their wages went up that were included for these other benefits. So it's not like I, you know. Now, and Jody, excuse me for interrupting. Um, in the town reports, in the back pages, yep. there's every employee listed. Right. And what they make. Right. It doesn't matter who they are or what. And that's where I get all this. Is that figure accurate in any way? It's, it's close. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... So if you knew which department they were in, using that list, but I want to see what it's been budgeted for coming up yes, for the next okay. year. That, that, that's our concern. Yes. You know, whatever happened this past budget, if it's voted. They're going to get paid that. Mm -hmm. But this way, you can see if they've added positions. You know, so people say, well, why did the town planner's budget go up by fifty thousand dollars? Well, he hired somebody. You know. And what you're asking is not unusual. No, that's like I said. I would. Yeah. You wouldn't believe the information, you know, you talk about programs. The town I came from, they used Munis, which gave you everything. But it also comes with a $65,000 license fee and expenses for upgrades and all that. So it, and it cost, the, the training within the town of Stoughton was $600,000. So it's not something Wareham's going to come up with tomorrow. I, I, I understand that. But a lot of towns are using that now. Uh, you know, so that's why I was, I'm was. i looking at the town side now. So then I go to the school. Trying to get information about the school is <laughs> sometimes you'd rather get a root canal with a Novocaine than try to frag equipment information out. But I put one together for the school department too. Not, I'm not looking for all the teachers, but I mean I got the superintendent, you know, transportation director, out of district coordinator. What do all these people make? Does, it, does anybody know? Not at all. No. In, <laughs> in upper fact, it's in the budget. Well, you told us in the budget. It shows in the budget. It shows individuals. It, it, it shows. Uh, is it the one you see or the one they produce? Good question. I can't answer that. I don't remember. But it, it shows. It doesn't have names, but it shows like psychology one or, or teacher, so many okay, steps, position, yeah. position wise, no. they do have it, yes. No, it's like we, when we mentioned before, there might be three clerks in your office, right. they're all at three different levels. Right, that's what, they, and they break down so, the levels for teachers. So, yeah. Jody, do you want us to somehow make a request of all these? Well, well, well all, all, all I'm asking for, and I'm not going to say supported, is it that somebody has all these numbers, and I'm assuming it's the town administrator, because these town heads don't come to in front of us with a number for wages without somebody giving it to them. Mm -hmm. They just didn't pull it out of the air. So those numbers are out there. I think they need to be shared, and I don't know why. Uh, well, Jody, how about in the salary section? Uh, there will be two lines. We Well, there's one line. We, we didn't why don't we just say how much it is? Derek, Thank provide you. the information. Let's see what he says. And I'd say we do it. Probably for the last three I mean, years. If, I, if I'm the only one that... No, no, I, I, don't know. Know. I agree. I, I, mean, I agree. I, I, think but I, think it's, but we, I think we should look at it going back a few years and see what has been going on. Yeah, yeah develop a history. Yeah. 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 I can tell you right now, my history is not great between COVID. The well, they got a pretty antiquated system, unfortunately. Um, three buttons. Uh, um, yeah, might, yeah, I might take a few buttons. But uh, I just think, I just think <laughs> it's when you go into town meeting, you know, I understand how Wareham does things. I understand where I came from, that they put wages in on, in the article, but in the back they had all the backup information that, the, you know, I was a superintendent. This is what my wages were for the last four years. You know, my assistant superintendent, this is what the wages were for the last four years. So people could look in the appendix and come up with these numbers if they so choose to, you know. Oh, I get any, uh... But I think for us, for me, I would feel more comfortable giving a positive recommendation because I can sit here and honestly say, this town's getting a pretty good deal with their town employees. 
I have no problem saying that, and I truly believe it. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to you know, blow smoke up anywhere, but uh, I I think they get a, a lot of bang for their buck. That's why, like David said, a lot leave. I, I understand. You know, and then the reason is, 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 is what, yeah. but do you also have people who are dedicated to the town? There's a they lot. Live of here, want to work here, want to see better. Just like we're dedicated, we don't make 10 cents. There's a large and, gap between you know, the, uh, let's say, a 10 year employee and then the people coming in. But again, that's also, there are also many, many are union employees. Yeah, yeah. So it's a negotiated fee. Yeah. yeah. Or negotiate, negotiated rate. Yeah. Yeah. How would you like to do uh, show that in our budget? It would be a line saying director, and then a level line saying, uh, let's say, four, four FTEs equivalent to this well, yeah. amount? Yeah, just don't put the names down. And just I, I, not, there's not a name in this whole thing. Right, so uh, no, you could just director. list every... I'd like to know some department you know, six clerks and some... Slack is, you know, clerks, expenses, human resources, the department head, but the assistant town administrator, benefits coordinator, which I never knew they had, so and they added the clerk. So let's put a request in and see what happens. See how much, see if anyone bucks us. It might be they're willing to oh, give it easy. We don't have to request that. Okay. We do it. Okay, okay so let's, let's do, do it. Request. Yeah, yeah, well, and I'm not looking to pick up anybody. Yeah, but but that's why I put it out there now. I didn't want to show up, Derek show up at our meeting in January it's well, it's, I it's, want this information on the department head from human resources. You need to provide this. I just think, you let's, know, let's maybe I'm wrong. I no, mean, let's, it, let's talk wrong. about then uh, the context we're going to do it. Presentation. I'd say uh, using maintenance. Um, you have a director. That yep. would be a line item. And then you'd have a uh, line for mechanics. If you have two mechanics. If you'd be with the mechanics, because that, that's a category. Missile maintenance. Director, foreman, project coordinator, department assistant, bookkeeper, equipment supervisor, master mechanic, mechanic part-time, heavy equipment operator, truck driver, laborer, custodian, and then there's some other things, identification, buyback, yeah, and, things and, like that. Yeah. Thing, night differential that they get. You know, I don't care who's getting the night differential, just how much money you're putting in it. You but know there, there's, there's specific categories because they're paid based on that category or their specialty. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just took it for a, a, a yeah. number, on-call on wages, longevity which one that drives me crazy. Um, there's also overtime. Yeah. There's overtime. Especially things like I mean, o Overtime's there. Yes. You know, so it, Does this have benefits in it as well? No. 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 Benefits are a separate item. We don't uh, do line item in the benefits package. At least that's not how we... Well, it's, oh, it's, it's benefits, true benefits, in the private the sector as a town. You, if, a, if a guy's making, a person I should say, is making $100,000, you can figure another 30000 for benefits. It's about a third of your wages. Right. Yeah, but our, our ben, what I was uh, in answering your yeah, right, question, benefits is a lump sum payment yeah. we make based on the number of people. So right. it doesn't make any difference if they're a mechanic or a school teacher, whatever, we, we pay the lump sum. But I'm still whatever struggling trying to get a list together for the school department because, again, <laughs> to find the jobs that they have there is, is a well, job in itself. To ask nice but uh, but it's, I, I think it's reasonable what you're asking for. I didn't think it was crazy. You said you're going to just a lump sum. Break it down. Like I say, we got two mechanics over there. You only want a lump sum is what two mechanics. And that's pay. what I have now. Yeah, and that's all you're looking for. And that's for. all I'm looking for. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm it's not, a good idea. Yeah. Well, can I throw one more idea out there? And you can throw this one back at me. This kind of came with, with, with Tom said at our last meeting when we were talking about the backhoe. And he made a lot of valid points. And I agreed with everything he said. I was having thought, I try to keep things as simple as I can. I understand that. You know the old saying, you keep it simple. Uh, is when somebody comes up and we use, I'm going to pick on the backhoe, that he comes up and he has this form. It's a John Deere backhoe. This is how many hours or miles. This is how much replacement is. Why are you replacing it? And what are you doing with the old one? It, it's, it's a few questions. I think that should be true. We, we had generators last year and asked the question, what are you going to do with the old ones? Well, the junk. Okay, I get it. But I just something I just haven't figured out how I, how simple I can make it. Uh, and some of planning does that though, don't they? David? I was going to ask right. David uh, the process you go through. There there is a process. It it has not been enforced, not been followed very carefully. So I will I'll bring that up at the next capital. I'm just thinking when it comes in front of us. Right. What capital planning does, but when when it, when it comes in front of this committee, 
you know, and, and Tom asked a lot of great questions, and, and I agreed with it. You know, how many hours are miles on, whatever the case be. Let's. Let's. Uh, uh, Jody and I are from the same community. When he makes reference to, we've both been there, and the group on the finance committee, because we didn't have a capital planning, uh, that particular group would go up and meet in the town barn, and they'd be crawling all over the equipment when they to see the rotted frame that they wanted to replace, why, things of that nature. But, but they also, the, the maintenance department, probably had the last five backhoes they bought up there for different <laughs> reasons, that they needed a new one, but yet they're still getting some use out of the old ones. I mean, some, some equipment you just never have too much of, you know, but when they sit there telling you, oh, we're probably going to trade it in, when you know flat out that's not happening. But, uh, but yeah, my, my downtime, I've been kind of working on some of this stuff and thinking about it, but I just wanted to bring it up now. I, I wouldn't want to blindside anybody. You know, I kind of told no, Bernie. No, you've been working on this for two years. Yeah. And I think you brought it to the point where um, it's, it, well, aside from the difficulty getting information, I think it's exactly how you want it to present it, too, and I think it's, it's done very well. And I think, it, I think it's in fairness, you know, everybody talks transparency in this day and age. Well, it's just been a little bit more transparent and giving the town people. You know, some of them are going to say, oh, God, are they overpaid? You know, or they're going to say, you know, we're getting a good deal. I mean, you're going to get different with everybody. I mean, we could sit here and all not agree on a salary for somebody. But that's, that's just the way it is some days. As far as the school goes, Julie, I'll bring me up at Tech One, so might help you be able to break Come. down the school committee over here on, on the school. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> <Don't> uh, <laugh. laughs> our next uh, meeting will be relevant. I'm going to have them in. Uh, one, they're moving into the new building earlier. They're going to move in in October, which means a lot ha has to happen. Uh, they have to close out, become, and take possession of the building. The town does. And there's a lot of questions regarding that, the preparatory work. There's the actual <coughs> protocols for transfer that have to take place. This was created by town meeting, the building committee, and according to uh, MSBA requirements, that uh, that building committee reports directly to Derek, chief executive officer. It's written in legislation that that's what they have to do, which means, and then uh, the selectmen appointed the committee, if you recall <coughs> that turmoil we had. So therefore, uh, they are appointed by the selectmen and I would interpret it saying they have to report back to the selectmen that their job has been completed. And selectmen takes over ownership. Selectmen owns everything. Now they would delegate that in care and custody to a school department. And that means they take possession. But it's happening very quickly because uh, Bacon has to turn everything over. We have to be in possession before anyone from the school department steps in that building as a resident or an occupant, because Bacon does not want liability. And the punch list has to be completed, et cetera. So a lot has to be done in the next couple months. I'm sure it's all been, they know how to do it, it's all been done. I just have to know myself that the protocols are being followed properly. And, as, and also because we are an agent of town meeting, that we are aware of and know that it is completed. Because that's what we're uh, re responsible for to make sure that they've spent the money and to have wisely. Of course, they saved it all over, all over $10 million, but they have to come and account for us also, as well as going to uh, the selectmen. And in addition, of course, we were disturbed that there was no accounting for the operation of the building in their budget. And I think it's appropriate if they're going to take possession of it in that fiscal year, which will be uh, August, that they be show us how they're going to pay for it. I think it's a legitimate request under the Finance Committee part. <coughs> and that, uh, at that time, we can probably put a uh, hold on and say, okay, give Jody the information he's looking for. <laughs> there you go. Boy, I don't mind ever being the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're right up. We got your back, Joey. We got your back. <laughs> I just, you know, I mean, it, I'd be curious. Great idea. You know, yeah. I, I was giving Bernie an example. I mean, I, I knew who the name of the middle school principal was. So I went online to see what, in some other towns what middle school principals were. And she's making more than all of them. And one of the principals, 
uh, middle school, got my principal of the year, administrator of the year, and all this other awards and stuff. And I'm saying, God, she's making nine thousand dollars more than he is, and this guy, they throw out the red carpet for. Him. <laughs> so it's interesting, to, you know. I, I like to look at numbers and compare and, and see what's what's going on. That tells you an awful lot. Anything else? Is there anything else you want uh, to, to take up before the fiscal year begins too much? It, um, the fiscal year. <laughs> yeah, because we uh, the date is right around the, no, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep. I say there's only three months in the summer, and we've already spent a third of it. What happened? But anything else uh, you want on the next agenda? Anything you want to look into? The next meeting date is 18. August 18th. Oh, August 18th. Right here? Yes. 6.30. So you you have a school committee? Building committee. School committee here in August or the building committee? Oh, both. Both. So, oh, we can do it separately. Uh, depending what they, uh, sometimes separating them is easier. So the school committee will be able to tell us how they made out this past fiscal year that ends tonight, midnight. Yes. And then they'll also be able to tell us <clears throat> what they, the, the budget they have, if they expect to be able to run operations on the budget that was approved. Yeah. You would think. Well, the explanation they gave us is the budget they turned in or showed us is the one requested or required by DESE. Yeah. And it's my by who? Department of oh, Elementary and Secondary Education. And it's my feeling that whatever DESE wants is fine with DESE. This is Wareham. He's, the town voted to support that school, support the building of a new school. They have a right to know that it's going to be paid for and supported as the, in their own budget that we, we appropriated. Yep. I think they have a responsibility to the people to do that. And through us, they should be doing it. I was, I was just amazed that they are going to go with three principals. Two principals, two assistants. And an oh. assistants over. Well, we have only not about information, but there's uh, each principal. It's two assistants. Plus it's an interim stuff. It's a load. And plus another, uh, they have another layer underneath them. I mean, the school department did not suffer any furloughs, did not suffer any layoffs. Did Don't get me started again. <laughs> okay. That I, I graduated from a high school. I had more kid, people in my graduate, kids <laughs> in my graduating class than they have in that whole school. We had one principal. How many, how many did you graduate with? 960. I graduated in 1974 from Brockton. I with 1,300 kids. Well, Brockton High School is always the best in the Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.